Hello, everyone. Dave Landry from DaveLandry.com, and this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls to for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. So, what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have a lot to say about that when we get to the charts, the live charts. That is, your questions are on trading. Just so my ADD doesn't kick in, keep them on the slides if you don't mind. And when we get to the live charts, start to ask about anything, or feel free to ask about anything you want. Also, when you you can start asking about stock picks now if you want, since we um, we have a fairly small crowd here tonight, I should be able to manage it. But just ask about one stock at a time. So I want to talk more on doing trading stuff, and it's not about the crypto, and that's going to make sense in just one second. But we will get into a lot of trading stuff, including the crypto. There's a disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading. I was often summing up. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Now, in the present weeks, I've been talking about doing the trading stuff, and this has got me thinking a lot about what I do, how I do it, what I do good, what I do bad or badly, or when I break my rules, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing I've been doing lately, and we're not going to have enough time to get into a lot of it tonight, but one thing I've been doing lately, in addition to being cognizant of what I do, and this is something that I've, I've told people to do when I mentor them and help them out, is to announce my trades out loud, even though I'm by myself here, that's the thing, you're, you're by yourself as a trader, you have nobody to answer to, and holding yourself accountable is very important. Like I told one guy once, would you be willing to share my trading service with my wife, with my wife, with your wife? And uh, that could end badly, couldn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, would you be willing to share my trading plan with your wife and tell her you're going to do exactly what's in the plan? And it doesn't always work, but over time it should do okay. And he said, oh no, that would, that would end the marriage. Obviously, he's worried about breaking the plan and doing things that he shouldn't been doing, which I kind of busted him <laughs> doing these things. And that's why I said, hey, would you be willing to hold yourself accountable by sharing all this trading with your wife, especially the stuff you're doing that's outside the system? Well, along the same lines, since I'm here by myself, I don't have anyone to answer to. And this is what, again, I tell people when I mentor them, announce your trades out loud, explain what you're doing. And, and I had a bad day today, and I'll just flat out admit it, on the intraday stuff, at least, everything else did okay. I think I made a little, nothing to brag about. But over the past week or so, I've been really working hard to announce my trades and everything. And today, I just kind of got so busy, caught up in the markets that I didn't do that. But anyway, I think it's important to do that. And the reason I got into this doing trading stuff all day thing is just to be cognizant of what I do and how can you learn from me? How can I learn from myself? And I learn a lot, obviously, in this educational business. Now, lately I've been talking a lot about being patient. In fact, to a point where I think I've been beating a dead horse on that. And what's interesting is, and I'll show you the portfolio in just one second, we've had no new core trades since the middle of July. I went, I think, over a month without recommending anything, and then I recommended a couple about seven to 10 days ago and maybe even a little bit longer, and neither of which have triggered. Now, I want you to hold me accountable because I did say this a few weeks ago after we went a couple of weeks without setups. I said, you know what? I don't want to put myself too much on the spot. I can't, pr I can't promise that the next trade I recommend is going to be the big one, but I'd be willing to bet that over my next five recommendations, one of them is going to make it all worthwhile. Now, I know I'm going out a little bit on the limb, but we had a month where I couldn't find anything, and then these last two haven't triggered yet, and they may not trigger, and I may have to go on to find something else. And I'm thinking with, with all that time behind me, something good should come along. As Mark Douglas once said, and I'm gonna quote Mark Douglas quite a bit later on, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud. And as he once said, a good salesman makes a few sales calls, gets rejected, 
goes grab a cup of coffee, and then he gets back to the phone knowing that he's getting closer and closer to some trades. A bad salesman makes a couple of bad sales calls or gets rejected a few times, that is, and then he goes drink his lunch. So anyway, I think that's that's vitally important. And and try to avoid as many of those bad trades as possible by being super duper selective. And then when you do have a couple of bad trades, which is inevitable, just know as long as you're following your system, you're getting closer and closer to the next big trades. Now, I was pretty proud of myself coming into today and I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a bang up day and then I'm going to show you how great I did today and show you what I've been doing and how proud I am. And the wheels kind of came off the bus today. And I haven't done the forensics yet, but it was a, it was kind of a tough day to trade. Market was kind of all, all over the place. But this is on the, the intraday stuff. But today, notwithstanding, one thing I've become, been very proud of lately is there's been a few days where I take little or no action. And on those days, I have made a little money on a couple of those days. And on some of those days with very little action, no money or a very insignificant loss. And, you know, I had some pizza party days as as Linda Rasky calls them. You make, you make enough to maybe go out and buy a pizza, have a little pizza party. So I've been, I've been very proud of these days lately. And this is one of the things, like I was saying earlier, kind of to introduce the the trading stuff all day thing is I've been very cognizant of. And I think it's important for me to tell you not only when I take some trades, and I'll show you one I took recently that worked out pretty good, and I'll show you all the crypto stuff, good, bad, and ugly. But I think just as important as it is for me to show you what I like in a setup and why I'm taking it or why I took it, it's important for me to tell you to be patient. And, and that is a secret to trading is figuring out when not to trade. And one of the things I've been doing, as I said, I think it was last week and weeks prior, is I've been looking at the range on these ETFs. And if it's below 50% of the 10 day ATR, and one thing I discovered is, especially in like the P's, and if you look at the spiders, you can go back in two weeks, I think, ago, and look at the little skull and crossbone thing I did on the chart. Those were the days where the range was less than 50% of the 10 day average true range. And if I go back and look at my trading on those days, most of those days were a loss or at best a small gain. And there were a lot of days that I could just flat out not trade the S&P futures. And as you know, or unless you haven't traded them, you wouldn't know. But if you trade them for more than a day, very, 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 very tough market to trade. Very, very efficient market. Now, we're going to get into inefficiency in one second and how wonderful that is. but s and futures, very inefficient market. So anyway, long story endless, I'm really proud of, of these few days lately. And again, I'm more cognizant of these things because I just want to think about what I'm doing all day long. I want to announce what I'm doing. And then, as you know, I'm becoming more and more transparent. I'm talking about these things more and more. But yeah, today I wish I would have called in sick. The wheels kind of came off the bus. It's just a testament to how much discipline it takes. And you could... And the problem is that discipline, I'm not sure who said this first, whether it was Scott Adams or possibly Malcolm Gladwell or what's the, what's the other guy's name? Can't think of his name. He wrote Mastering Fear. He wrote Kaizen. Uh, anyway, all three of those guys I would recommend you, you read. But one of them talked about the fact that discipline get used up, gets used up. And so you got to be really careful with that. Patience gets used up too, and, and it's been tough to be patient for so long, believe me. And who was it said, uh, doing nothing, I think it was Ken Lambert, doing nothing is harder than it looks. One thing I woke up thinking about today, and I don't just automatically start thinking about all this trading stuff, but what I do, as I've said ad nauseum, is I do, and I would show them to you, but there might be some personal things in there. You might say, oh my God. <laughs> But because I just I let it all hang out. But I write three handwritten pages every day. And I did this many, many years ago, and I called it a brain dump. And just to give credit what credit is due, the reason I started doing them again, I wish I wouldn't have quit because it would have been an unbelievable resource. But the reason I started doing doing them again was because I started reading a book by Julia Julia Dula Julia? 
how do you say that? Julia Cameron, and it's called The Artist Way, and then I also have her Artist Way for Business. Uh, both books I haven't read completely other than the first few pages where she said, hey, do your morning pages. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I used to do that. That's great. And you could read her book to get a little bit more ideas on how to do those, but just keep the pen down best you can. Write about anything that just comes to your mind. And even if it's something stupid, it's in your head and it would help to get that out of your head. And it's amazing how much stuff I have gotten from that. And I went back and looked the last couple of weeks and I have so many things I want to talk about in these presentations. And it's just going to take me a long time to get around to doing them. And, and this is like, this is today's notes that I, that I copied from recent notes. And I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. So it's kind of exciting that all this is coming out of those pages. So I would recommend you do it. Yeah, Lawrence, thank you. Uh, the name of the book, or one of the books, is The Kaizen Way. If you go to www.davelander.com slash books dash two dash read, all of those books should be there. And it's Robert Mara. I, I met him at a conference that I was speaking at, and he was uh, very good, very, 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 very good uh, speaker. And yeah, read The Kaizen Way first, but also read Mastering Fear. Now, money will come, but it's on its own time frame. And that's one thing I've been writing about lately in my pages during the morning is that I've got a lot of, and many of them are first world problems, but I've, I've got some issues that I'm dealing with around my house. The wife wants a pool, so we're getting a pool. And I ran my mouth about my how great my trading was a while back. And she said, where are we getting the money? And I'm like, well, just you know, just take some of our savings and borrow from that to pay ourselves back. She goes, no, 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 no. You've been talking about this trading thing being great. We've been here before. So I'm like, oh, shit. So now that's coming out of my account. And then uh, I had this silly COVID thing, and I had to go get a $4,000 bag of fluids to keep me alive. So, you know, a little bag of saline was all it took. But Anyway, long story endless, mostly first world problems, but we all have expenses and we all we all need money almost all the time as opposed to, well, let's just sit around and wait for the next big winner and then we'll have, have some money. But the money will come if you're patient enough. That I could that I could almost guarantee if you are very prudent in what you do and you're very patient. The real money is in the longer term trend following, and I'll pull a portfolio up here in just one second, which we do through my superior stock selection. I'm kind of half kidding, but I do work hard to find the best stocks. I really do. Combined with an excellent hybrid money management system. And what we're doing there is we are taking a swing trade profit of 1% total. Okay. So if we're trading a hypothetical 100K account, or actually a real 100K account, you would take $1,000 profit once you have it, and then let the rest ride. So here's the open portfolio. And we don't have any huge winners in here. This one's okay, up 155%, but not too long ago, we had one that was up, at the peak at least, up over 600%. And that's a testament for where the, where the real money is. And that was like uh, 28 to 30 something percent gain on the account and it was a really great thing but anyway this is the open portfolio and you can see that this position apg was open way back last july so we've been in this for over a year and a lot of people are like well i don't, I don't want to trade it's, i'm too busy to trade it's like well you know i i trade way too much okay because i do a lot of intraday stuff i'm trying to pay for a pool i gotta pull i gotta pay for that four thousand dollars for that bag of fluid you know, it, it just never ends. And if you got kids, uh, my daughter's tuition is due. It's just ridiculous, right? Um, <laughs> I was going to make some jokes, but better not. Anyway, so the real money's in the longer term trends. And also, as far as being patient, you could see that after about one month, like I said earlier, if you go in and look at the archives, daveleonard.com slash archives, you can see this exact spreadsheet. It's going to be a little bit dated. It'll be a few, a week or two old at least. I'll I'll update them best I can on Friday, August 27th. So after that, check back anytime after that, and you'll see some newer ones. But anyway, there was about one month where this was none, and then now we have two potential setups down here. So the point is two things. One, the real money's in the longer term 
trend following, and I'll have more of those examples for you next week. And then two, it's very, very, very important to be patient. I had a few revolving door people come in recently, or quite a few of them, and I'm not glad they're gone. I wish they would have hung out, but I, I don't want a client that's not going to be patient and and follow through because if, if they can't follow through for a few months they're probably going to be perpetually out of phase and one guy came in recently and he thought things were too simple and you know all you have to do and, and i'm gonna talk a little bit about this in one second but all you have to do is sell higher than you buy or cover lower than you short and i think a lot of people lose sight of that now, my best clients are those who come to me and get bored and quit when there's nothing going on, or if it's choppy, they make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and give up. Then they go off to chase rainbows, and then they come back and say, you know what, Dave, I realize as you preach, and as everybody else preach, preaches who has been doing this for a while, except for the scumbags out there, but they're getting sued for $137 million, so that's another issue altogether. But... As I preach, there is no holy grail, and it does take a little time. Now, lately I've been talking a lot about crypto, and I see some of you guys talking, especially like in a Facebook group, saying, oh, I don't trade crypto. Well, it's it's really not about the crypto, and this is something I really wrote a lot about this morning, and I'm going to flesh out a lot of this in upcoming weeks. It's more about recognizing a momentum market, and that could be any momentum market jumping on and then of course having a chair ready for when the music stops and that might be right now and dang you know uh maybe worse than dang momentum usually doesn't last very long the last time i remember momentum lasting a while was way back in the late 90s and and you know we all wish we had a time machine and can go back there <laughs> and just and just take it to its fullest and then have that chair ready for when the music stops. I may have hung around a little too long as, as I wrote, I think, in my first book on that. And uh, what I did was after after overstaying my welcome a little bit, then I got really patient and then I started making money again. And that's all in the first book, which, by the way, you can get for free if you go, to, if you're a member of DaveLander.com, you'll get it for free, but I'll give it to anyone else for free. I think it's DaveLander.com slash free dash book. And I'll correct that link in post. But anyway, momentum doesn't last as long as you as you want it to, and that's a bit of a bummer. But again, it's not just about the crypto, it's, it's learning how to trade any momentum market. And a momentum market is an inefficient market. It's not priced where it should, and you'll see some of these things go up 50% or more overnight. And going back to the glory days, and boy, we could all dream, but I remember, and I didn't take the damn setup. I can't believe I didn't take it. But I remember, I think it was Red Hat, R-H-A-T. I, I remember recommending it around 55, and it opened around 54 and a half or something. It just kind of messed around a little bit. And then it had a little bit of trigger. It didn't do a whole lot. And then by the end of the day, it went up 55 points. And we've had a few, and I don't remember exactly when, but a few, I think about six months ago in a Landry list, we had a few 100% gainers that took off. Unfortunately, we weren't in them because they were too volatile to begin with, but I, I showed them because they were set up and some of you guys go out to some more volatile stuff. And I caught one or two of those here and there and I'll try to figure out where they are and which ones they were and, and when it was, but it's a I had to do a lot of digging to figure that out. Anyway, so it's not about the crypto, it's about trading momentum. And this is, again, what I was thinking after last week at Van but this is what this is what I was really thinking about this morning. If you can learn to recognize the momentum, then when the next hot market comes along, whatever that may be, and lately it's been IPOs a tiny bit, not, not an incredible IPO bull market. You really have to pick your spots carefully. But there's been a few, and I'll show you one in one second. But if you pay attention to what's going on, you're going to learn to recognize where the future money is. Now, as I said last week, you don't have to, you don't have to spend a fortune trading these things and years ago i i stopped short of recommending and i think i said this last week trading like micro account micro forex account uh, micro shares on a forex account like a 0.001 instead of like a full contract or whatever 
and and now with the crypto, you can kind of do the same thing. The, the great thing about the crypto is it's a very inefficient market, at least now, whereas the Forex is a very efficient market. A lot of big players in the Forex market. But the reason I said trade the micro or whatever is just to get you used to the buying and selling and not care whether something goes up or something goes down. Yeah, John, we'll get to those things in just one second. Keep them coming. Now, it's trading at its utmost essence. It's basically, you're just jumping on and off of these trends when you are in that momentum type of market, okay? And it may be coming to an end. We're going to take take a look at the live charts here in one second. Now, you have to be really flippant doing these momentum markets. I've, I've been watching the Facebook group, and I saw some complaints going back a couple of weeks or whatever about this crypto and that crypto. And it's like, I don't care. If I immediately lose money in one, you know, it's like F you and the horse you rode in on, and I'm looking to find another one. And it's been so great, you know, today and recently notwithstanding, but it's been so great for a while that when I get stopped out of those ones, it clears up a slot for me to go out and buy something else. Now, cash is not trash, as I'm going to mention in passing in a few minutes. And I don't think you should always put all your money to work. But if you're seeing so many opportunities, if there's so many of these pairs that are going up, if you get knocked out of one, that just means you can move on to a better one, kind of a almost a permanent window dressing like we talked about last week. Now, the great thing about this is it, it really helps you to be flippant. And it's something that, and I'm a very emotional guy, okay? Today I wasn't flipping in my trading, but a lot of times I'm flipping in my trading. And especially in the crypto, I could, I could care less. I just go in, bam, and I nail them when they're when they're going up, as I'm going to show you in just one second. And when they stop going up, I get out and I take the partial profits along the way and I bump up that trailing stop just like I would in a in an individual stock. And it's it's a lot of fun because I'm just kind of treating it like a game, and I'm trying to see how long I can not care. Now, truth be told, as the account has begun to grow a little bit. Now I'm kind of starting to mentally monetize as, oh, wait a minute, this is, we need, you know, I could have paid for that bag of fluids if I would take that money out, you know? So now it's starting to get a little bit harder than it was. And on top of that, of course, the momentum's beginning to slow. But it's very important, as I've said many times before, to learn how to be flippant in your trading. And it helps you when you're trading these momentum markets is to learn how not to care. You just need to get on board stuff that's going up. And half the time or 99% of the time, I have no idea what these crypto things do. And I try not to look them up. Now, as soon as you start to care, your performance will begin to suffer. And let's face it, we're all human. And I am, I am extra emotional. In some cases, one could argue maybe a little too emotional to trade <laughs> because I do get I do get very emotional. But I find that, again, as soon as you start to care, performance will suffer. And I have a quote from Larry Williams that's going to make a lot of sense there. Now, another thing, too, and I'm going to back this up with some quotes from Douglas. One reason it's a lot of fun is because I know what needs to be done. I know I just need to jump on, okay? When they're going up and I know I need to put a stop in just in case they stop going up. And then I know I need to put a limit order in if they keep going up to get out of half. And then I know I need to bring that stop up. There's no confusion about what needs to be done when you're trading that type of inefficient market. Now, again, scratch out the word crypto and just call it a momentum market. OK, because the next great momentum market comes along. Could be IPOs. It could be some other. I mean. Crypto's stupid. I'm not going to argue with you on that, you know, but I'm not going to be like these newsletter writers and tell you how stupid it is at, at, at 1,000 and 2,000 and 4,000 and 10,000 and 20,000 and 50,000 and 60,000, you know? And then when it goes down, I told you. It's like, okay, whatever. 
But anyway, it's a lot of fun because you know what needs to be done. You just need to buy the ones that's going up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. It goes back to the old Will Rogers thing. Now, this is a little Mark Douglas that kind of dovetails into this and kind of dovetails into my day today is when you go into a trade and it's kind of half baked and you're not 100% sure exactly what you're going to do. And if you fully haven't, if you haven't fully accepted the risks, then you create this animosity, you create this internal conflict. And I created some of that today, okay? And it made me think a lot about Douglas. Essentially, what you fear is not the markets, but rather your inability to do what you need to do, when you need to do it without hesitation. And when I go into something like, oh, okay, I'm going to go into this, I'm going to risk, it's, let's say it's an intraday ETF or something. I'm going to like, I'm going to risk 30 cents on it. I get stopped out. I could care less. I'm going to take partial profits at 30 cents. And it's like, click, 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 click. And, you know, next, and I move on in my life. And with the longer term trend following stuff, I know where I'm going to get in. I know where my stop is going to be. It, it, it sucks when I get stopped out early, okay, before I get my initial profit target, at least that. But I kind of have wrapped my head around all that by doing it for over 20 years. And, and the reason I bring up the intraday stuff is I've been doing a little bit more of that lately. I've done it throughout my career. It's it's a bad habit to fall into doing too much of it because it will kind of consume you if you're not careful. And same thing goes for crypto, by the way, too. You got to be careful with that. It's one of you guys were talking about last Saturday night where we were talking about crypto. <laughs> and I was in here trading crypto, of course. But again, I think it, it it's worth repeating. You're not... What you're fearing is not the markets, okay, but your inability, because you know what? The markets have no fear in them. The markets cannot generate fear unless you are an active participant in that market, or as you'll, as I'll talk about in one second, you got a little FOMO or a new term I'm working on, some POMO. Anyway, so you fear your ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. If you could put on a trade without hesitation, slash, take it off, without emotional discomfort, you have accepted the risk. One of the best ways to accept the risk is to trade at a small size. Like I said last week, if my crypto accounts blew up overnight, well now now it's you know it's hard for me to say that now, but a few weeks ago if my crypto accounts blew up, it really it well it certainly wouldn't affect my lifestyle. It would piss me off a little bit, but I I could brush myself, you know, get up, dust myself off and, and start all over again, like the Peter Tosh song. So if you can put on a trail without hesitation, take it off without emotional discomfort, you have accepted the risk. Now, getting back to the being flippant idea that I'm that I'm always trying to noodle with and wrap my head around. Good quote from Larry Williams, to make money as a trader, you have to not care. As soon as you start caring, you have emotional attachment. It's counterintuitive. The more you care, the less you make. The more you're clinically dispassionate and the less attached to your trades, the more you will make. It's really quite simple, but very hard to accept. You'll probably see this quote again and again from me. Now, a lot of my friends, it's kind of weird because like one guy I've known for years and we started working out together recently with another one of his buddies. And and I don't know if it was for his friend's benefit or what, but he seemed kind of confused after all these years of knowing me. And he says, what exactly do you do? And what's kind of funny is everyone phrases it like that. What exactly do you do? Well, I've given many answers over the years, but now my answer is I just buy things that go up and sell things that go down. Now, I'm not being flippant in that answer, but that's pretty much what we do. It's a little bit more complex, obviously, in a in a more mature market. But in a lot of cases, we sort of do just that. We're going to go into crypto in one second. That's what I've been doing lately. I'm going to show you an IPO setup that I took recently. That's exactly what I did. So, yeah, there's a little bit more to it than that. But... What I keep coming back to is 
you can't lose sight of this. And this has got me thinking about the Curtis Faith quote. By the way, you think of flippant, you think of Curtis Faith. Uh, he wrote he wrote one of those turtle books, which I swore I would never read, as I've said a thousand times, until Larry McMillan at one of the AAPTA conferences said, you know what, that that one that Curtis Faith wrote was pretty good. He talks about the, the uh, ping pong table they had, and my office is kind of tiny now. I had said, you know, I thought this would be plenty big enough for me, but it, I, was, I had a thousand square foot office all to myself which was really nice. And now it's, I don't know how many square foot it is, but it's a little smaller. It doesn't go back forever behind the curtain. But anyway, he wrote uh, one of the turtle books and I forget the name of it, but it's uh, just do turtle and faith or go to the aforementioned link, which I'll put in post. And then he also wrote, I don't know if you can see this, not trading from the gut. This is a good little read, a quick little read. It's a pretty good little book. Um, Mr. Faith did really well with the turtles. He was one of the top traders. And then I, I think he might have blown up or something. I saw an interview where he blew up and basically he said the fact that he didn't care helped him to make all the money too. So if it, you know, don't care, but make sure you have some kind of money management plan in place. And he's a bit of a character. I'd like to meet him someday, but uh I don't know if they I don't know if they have visiting hours or whatever, but uh that's another story altogether. <laughs> Allegedly. Anyway, I like one of the things he said, the great irony of trading is that it is difficult precisely because it is so very simple. Now, notice he didn't say easy. <laughs> he actually used the word difficult. And it is. And anytime, I don't know about you guys, but anytime I lose money in trading, I'm like, you know what, David? All you have to do is capture this little price move, a price move on the chart. Doesn't matter what they do, it doesn't matter who they are or what it is or the situation in Nigeria. I just have to capture a move in the price chart. And sometimes I think we all lose sight of that. And then it just humbles me and it pisses me off when I lose money because I didn't capture that little move on the price chart. See, I'm a very emotional guy. Another thing that Mr. Faith said, and I think this was this quote came straight from, again, trading from the gut. It takes a lot of time and study before one realizes just how simple trading is, but it takes many years of failure before most traders come to grips with how hard it can be to keep things simple and not lose sight of the basics. Like I said earlier, somebody chastised me because they thought my stuff was too simple. Well, I'd be willing to bet that that person is probably not a successful trader. They they're, that person's more interested in, in telling you how smart they are because he he passed some tests or whatever, and you know, well, good for you, okay. The final exam should be you have to turn 10k into 20k, and then 20k into 40k, and then maybe that into six figures, and then keep that money, okay? That would be a good final exam, right? Anyway, a lot of times people lose sight of the basics, and I've been guilty before too, and. When you first approach technical analysis, now I did go off into a, a fundamental slant for a while because I thought I had to figure out what a company does, and a lot of people do 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 that. And this is uh, back when libraries existed. To you, to you uh, young kids in here, a library is a place that has books, and they'll like they'll actually loan you a book, and then you can bring the book back at a certain time. And if you don't bring it back at a certain time, they charge you about one penny a week or something like that. Anyway. But I used to spend a sizable part of my weekend in libraries doing research on companies. I know you want to party with me, right? I had party a little back too back then. I wasn't in that library the whole weekend. Discovered sailboat racing and some other things. But anyway, like uh, Mr. Faith said, and as I often say, you lose sight of the basics, and then you start searching for the arcane, and it gets more and more complex, and then you come back to the basics, once again, is the market going up? Is the market going down? Is the market going sideways? I sometimes I lose sight of that, so I put the instructions on my right arm. So I don't forget. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is just the, the the pure nature of the crypto lately, and and you know, substitute momentum market for crypto has just been absolutely wonderful. And you could just go in 
and be that trader that just buys stuff that goes up and then you're willing to kick out stuff that starts going down because there's more stuff that's going up. Another thing I've been writing a lot about lately, and I don't know whether to use more of a team building analogy or a manager analogy, and, and like I said last week and, and probably every week prior, you got three employees busting in their butt and one employee sitting on his, okay? What are you gonna do? You're gonna fire the, fire the one that's working the hardest because he's due to stop working or you're going to fire the one that's not doing anything. Why would you keep it? Well, maybe he's gonna start working tomorrow, you know? And a lot of people nurse, so to speak, and had one client actually said that, uh, he was nursing a lot of positions. And, you know, I guess according to Greg, you can nurse anything with nipples, but I didn't know this doc said nipples. Anyway, but that's the beauty of the crypto is you could be that pure trader. And, it, and, and for me, it's a lot of fun. Now, RS trading is buying markets that are stronger than others, okay, than other markets on a relative basis. And then all I'm doing is sorting by percent change. And as I've said a thousand times, one client over a period of many years, okay, and he did it twice. And I don't know if it was, I don't, I doubt it was two consecutive years, but we were, we got into a couple of momentum markets and he was just taking my landry list, which is my list of setups. I don't know, I'm beating a dead horse. I apologize. But we do have some new people in here tonight, I see. So maybe they're just here for the first time. But anyway, he took my landry list, which is already a momentum list to begin with, and he sorted those. And that, those are the best stocks that I could find personally. And he sorted those by percent change. And, and as I said last week and weeks prior, I think it was just using a little CNBC app. But anyway, long story endless, he paid for a couple of down payments on investment properties just by doing that, which is awesome. And you know what? I got a client for life. At least I hope so. So I'm glad that he was successful in doing that. Now, again, I'm just buying markets that are stronger than other markets. And all I'm doing is sorting by percent change. Now, in this particular program, and I think it works the way in, in the same way in ACP too, it's just day over day change. That's all I'm looking at, right? So you can see there's a few up here that are really, really strong and then it kind of dies out. And the weakest, the least weak are down here, the most strong are up here. And that's it, okay? Using the word relative strength confuses people. They think of like RSI, which is an oscillator that compares a market to itself. Now, I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but if you are going to use an oscillator like RSI, then pick a time period and then sort by RSI and pick the strongest ones if that's you're going to do. I knew somebody many years ago, and I think it was Larry Connors that was doing some kind of research like that. No need to do that, though, and no need to confuse things. It's not an indicator. It's just a day-over-day -day change. If you want to get really fancy with this, figure out a way how to do delta relative strength. Like I said before, years ago with trading markets, we had somebody that was going to do delta relative strength, and we weren't able weren't able to make a deal with him. We being the powers that be, not me personally. But delta relative strength is kind of like the best way to explain it is like. Uh, Hey, it's 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 90 degrees outside. Dang, that's hot. It's like, well, it was 100 degrees 20 minutes ago. It's like, oh, okay. So it's hot, but it's cooling off, okay? Or just the opposite. It's 20 degrees outside. Man, that's cold. Well, it was 10 degrees earlier, and you know, 10 minutes later, maybe it's 30 degrees. So that the change is increasing the delta, okay? So delta would be like something might be a little further down here, but then it starts kind of crawling its way higher, and there was software years ago that did that. If anybody ever finds that software, leave it in the comments below or just uh, davelearner.com slash contact, let me know and, and figure out a way to, if we could do those kind of things in crypto, it'd be pretty awesome, I do think. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all these too much. Is it too late? <laughs> um, but like I said in this whole presentation, crypto is crypto, it's inefficient. It's an inefficient market at this juncture. You could just buy it when they're going up. And then trade crypto like any other inefficient market. And I really don't care. And as long as they go up, and yeah, it's probably all BS and I could give a crap. They're all crap. That's why they call shit coins, okay? With a Y. And again, avoid 
getting attached, but you're tired. You know, when the time comes, you know, F you, you're fired. Get out of here. And again, it's a blast, but it never lasts, you know, and and my fear in talking about these things, of course, now we're going on three weeks, I guess, since I first brought it up again, brought it up again, because we talked about them a long time ago when they were hot. And my fear was that, you know what, this market's going to cool off and right around the time we get around talking about it, it's already cooled off. But that's okay because other markets are going to heat up and that's going to be fantastic when they do. Cash is not trash. Got stopped out of a lot of them last night. I was actually scared to look at my screens when I looked at my little phone and saw the uh, the, the charts, what they did. I'm like, oh crap, I probably lost a ton. And to my surprise, I was relatively unscathed, although I did get stopped out of quite a few. And that's the beauty of taking profits and having a, a stop. And now I'm building a little cash in those accounts. And hopefully, I know I just said hope, but hopefully I can start putting them back to work. Uh, do know your risks, and again, if you're only risking, you know, let's say 50 bucks on a trade, then eh, who cares, right? Now, if you are trading relative strength, like the, the client I was just I talk about so often, he was doing that on an intraday basis, so he was in the top, and I don't know how many stocks, but let's say, let's just use three, okay? He was in the top three stocks all day. And he would rotate his portfolio to where he would stay in those three stocks all day. I think occasionally he'd reg to an account, but that's another story altogether. But even though what we're doing is has the potential, I should say, to be in and out, in and out, in and out, hitting the button like the rabbit, rabbit, the rat going for the cocaine. The goal is always, and everything I do, except for some intraday stuff with the ETFs and occasionally with the, the Russian doll thing we talked about in, in previous webinars, but usually my goal, and even intraday, I'm trying to hold on the whole day. So that's a long, a long-term intraday trade, right? But the goal is always through the hybrid approach to money management to hold on positions as long as possible. And last week, I showed you some positions that were still on from weeks prior. So I went in today, and this was earlier today, so some of these may have stopped out by now, so we'll see in a few minutes. But to my surprise, some of these guys I put on at the end of July, okay? And ironically, today's the 26th, right? So some of these, let's see, one, two, three, four of these I've been in for a month, one of them almost a month. And then you can see the rest of these, it's still been a little while since I put on the original position. Okay, let me just mention something about IPOs real quick. And then I'm going to hop into the altcoins. Craig said, I just screen captured the Douglas screen. It needs to be framed over a monitor. It's absolutely, amen. You know, and I was thinking about uh, you know, writing some things in stone. Like I was thinking about maybe one day I'll break down and get a CNC machine or whatever, and and print a couple of these things in wood or or or, or, or something like that, just to just to have them on the wall and remind me of these things. And and you know that that Douglas thing kind of haunts me a lot because like I got in today on one, I went in and out twice, failed miserably on both. And basically, I just didn't fully accept the risk. And had I taken on or taken or put on, I should say, less shares and less risk and a wider stop, I would have ended up today either likely slightly profitable or at worst, a scratch out on the trade. But instead, I tried to get cute and put on more shares. And in the back of my head, I'm like, I have not fully accepted this risk. So absolutely, both those Douglas quotes good stuff some of that stuff i got and it probably got thrown away in the last move but i had a tape from i guess it's like 25 years ago oh my god i'm getting old where he talked at a tell rates this uh seminar which i think is now money show or traders expo one of those both of, I, buddy shows owns traders expo so it's both i guess but anyway um the guy's name escapes me i met the guy who did the tell rate seminars many years later but anyway long story endless i got a tape a cassette tape 
to you kids, that's a little thing that actually has tape in it. <laughs> that's why you hear us old people say, will you tape that for me? <laughs> anyway, getting back to inefficient markets, IPOs are not dead yet. What do you guys, and you probably re you probably regret saying that, said you'd stop trading the buy a V pattern because nothing was working. Well, all you need is one to make it work. Now, this is one we were talking about in the in the Facebook group. And day five was on the 19th, and then the buy at B would have been right there. Now, I don't have an official rule because when I talked about it in Facebook, one of you guys said, uh, where'd you get that rule? It's like, well, I don't have an official rule, but as a general statement, with an IPO, I find if they're less than $5 a share, a lot of times they tend to just go back down to zero. But in this case, yeah, I'm long that one too, John. We'll 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 bring that I'll bring that up in a minute. In this case, it was right around five bucks a share or less than five bucks a share when I got the buy. It was one of those tricky things where the range was pretty small and then the big range was made on day five. Go in and watch prior weekend charts for a lot more on this pattern and all. And anyway, I got to thinking, well, the next day I saw it really breaking out. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and and just buy it. Now, this is this is one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately and trying to flesh out a little bit and, and, and figure out a way to kind of present it to you. And this is especially true in the crypto. You just have to jump in, you know? And it's kind of like, for me, I, I, I think you got to figure out how your future self is going to feel, okay? And I am a risk taker and, and hopefully not a gambler, but I, I I think I'm a risk taker. And and I think that taking risk has, has gotten me this far and I'm gonna continue to take risk. And I get much more pissed off if I don't take a stop stock and it takes off without me versus if I take the stock and I lose money. And the the loss is, is it hurts and, it, and I get pissed off, don't get me wrong. But if I'm risking 2%, who cares, okay? I'll live to fight another day. You know, it's like F you and, and the horse you rode in on and I move on. And, and as I think I've mentioned before or certainly have written about not too long ago, it's like every time I ride my bike by the marina, and I look at some of the boats in there that I wouldn't mind having myself. I'm like, you know, that one stock would have paid for that boat easily. And that and that that sticks with me. And you know, I, I could I could tell you one loss I had recently, but other than that, I can't think of any losses off the top of my hand. I mean, give me give me some time, and and there's been plenty, believe me. But I tend to forget about them and move on. But if I miss a big stock. A stock that goes up 100, 200 points without me, it, it sticks with me. So it's kind of like the fear of missing out, which is a FOMO versus being pissed off from missing out. And I guess FOMO is part of that POMO too. And I'm going to flesh that out a little bit. But anyway, so I said, you know what? I'm just going to buy this thing. If it comes back in, so what? $2,000 per 100K, I could live the fight another day. So I went ahead and bought it the following day. And then luckily, after a bit of a bumpy start, it rallies the next day and I'm able to get half of the position out. So here's the actual trades down there in this one account. I did 2,000 shares, as you can see, flipped out 1,000 for, I forget how much that is, but do the math, 95 cents. So I made, uh, like 65 or cents or whatever, but percentage wise, it's a pretty big amount of money. It was a decent amount of money given the account size. So, and kind of failed miserably the next day, but so far kind of hanging in there. And you can see that so far I'm still profitable on it. And my stop is at break even or more. And I don't want to give up all of those profits. So I'll probably start bumping up a little bit. In your original IPO course, day six, which was the buy, and that's in, I stick with that much of the time. 
Yeah. Um, and that's something that I probably need to update. I think in if you look in the um, the Q and A is it kind of gave me a, a chance behind the firewall. If you go to the Q and A, I, I update I kind of update a lot of things there. Um, but yeah, day six it, it was kind of implied in the IPO course day six, but I think I've always taken them on day five. And if if I'm wrong on that, then shortly after the course was made public that pattern became really popular with everybody who took the course and i i i sort of you know so don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure in the co in the course i want to say it's day five but yeah worst case it's day six because i seem to think that i talked about the buy at b plus one and buy at b is, is a, sometimes a tough pattern it's sometimes tough to trade because you're you're a few seconds before the close you buy it and you close your eyes you buy it and, and then you're like oh geez what did i do well, the good news is sometimes you get paid in after hours trading, and there's been a few cases, not that often, but every now and then where I've been able to flip out the stock in after hours trading. Uh, but yeah, if you miss the buy at B, because you've got to be there around the close, and every, occasionally I'll miss a close, or occasionally I'm so busy with so many positions that I really don't have time to, to get in that proper IPO research, you could do what I call a buy at B plus one, and you could look to get in on day six. And day six works works pretty pretty good too. So yeah, but you know whatever works for you. Uh, I've had some really good luck on day five, but yeah, it's a little bit more dangerous. Now last week I di I didn't know what cyan was. I'm trying to get my color coding scheme right. Okay, so to make some sense. But cyan means something I wanted to talk about in this webinar, okay? So from now on, cyan's going to be something I want to talk about. Green means I've taken partial profits. And orange means something I'm looking at. And usually orange means I have an order in place, but in this case, I don't. So I'll just make it blue as in like, TFM stuff is going to be anything blue means something I'm really interested in. Okay. Now, let me just show you the relative strength stuff real quick. And we talked about it a lot last week, so I'm not going to bore you too much. I know too late. But you can see that this one's up 32%, but it's already tailed way off. Okay. So if you were fortunate enough to see this on its way up, and I, and I think that happened overnight because I was a little bummed out. And that's where it could consume you. You know, if I was in here at midnight, I probably would have caught this move and I definitely would have traded it. But it's already come back in. So I wouldn't buy it just because it's strong now. But if you can catch them on their way up, like this one right here, for instance. In fact, I don't know what that is, but I think I'm going to buy some of that. Okay. I wonder if I could do it quick enough over here. Um, so the problem is I don't want to get busy after the webinar. But you can see that it's one of the strongest ones, okay? So again, cash is not trash. Let's see if I can fire it off. Like I said last week, I've, I've had some issues with um, with Kraken. Let's see what happens. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. Let's take a look at this LRC, okay? So this is one I got stopped out of and I want to talk about. I, I entered here, and that's the thing. Sometimes you're buying this, um, these momentum markets, and when momentum ends, it ends badly. Now, of course, if I could have caught it down here when it was first breaking out, okay, and this is the FOMO versus POMO that I'll talk a lot more about in upcoming webinars, but that is one of the dangers, okay? This is one of the strongest ones. I bought it and then got stopped out within two days, okay? So I don't want to make it look like it's all a bed of roses, but if, you, if I could have caught this one at this point here, and it ran up about 50%. That would have been pretty nice. So what we're looking at, CGLD, let's uh, let's pick up some of that. Talk among yourself. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see if we can do this. I've got a VPN on over here. I think that's slowing me down a little bit. Plus, I have this bright light in my face. CGLD. What is it? Well, I'm gonna to have to do it afterwards because I can't. Is that on Kraken sitting right now? 
me try uh, let me try Coinbase. I hate to say it, but what what is CGLD? <laughs> did I just is that did I just violate my rules here? All right, I'm waiting on the screen. Anyway, let me just go through a few of these. So these are the strongest by relative strength. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is there's not a whole lot to do, okay? Because there's only a few up here, and then you see a lot of red down here. So the the bloom may be off the rows in some of these. Now, before I forget, let's just let me just show you the ones that I'm in. And we might end up where in a market where it becomes we trade it more like the core methodology. So maybe like pullbacks to the 30 EMA or in a case like this, this is deep enough because the EMA is so far away. I tried to put an order earlier today on this one at seven. I don't know why it didn't take it. That's one thing that I'm finding out. It's not like you're trading with, with Think of Swim or Charles Schwab or any other major brokerage where you just where you just pull up the trading screen, it comes right up or the trading platform comes right up and then you place your trades. So let's see, and eventually we might do this in real time. Let's see, C, G, L, T. Now front runner me on, Charles. <laughs> so let me just buy a little bit of this. This was shits and giggles. And let's see. All right. So I'm long C, G, L, D. So this, so what I'm going to do here, and I'm just going to put it in. I'm gonna make it orange means it's something I have to do. So I'll make this one, is that that one? No, it was this one. So we'll see what happens, okay? So, and let's go back to this one. So let me just put a little arrow. Okay, so I bought it right, right there, okay? So let's see what happens. Okay, let me just go through these real quick. Okay, so like I was saying, even though, you could be in and out of these things, and, and a lot of these was in and out in one day, you know. But you don't. Ha but if they run, just stick with them, okay? So I bought this one here, and if memory serves, before I started documenting these trades, I might have bought it on this breakout here, flipped in and out, maybe gotten stopped out. But I know I bought it on this day here, and then I flipped it out the next day for half, and then that trailing stop is up here. So even if it gets stopped out now. It's been a pretty good run, better than the poke in the eye. Now, this one here, I got stopped out of, I think I got stopped out of, no, I'm still in this one. Okay, so this one here, I bought it here, way back here, flipped out half, and I just bought it because it was going up. At the time, this was a number one pair, flipped out half, and then my trailing stop is here. Now, don't fall in love with these things, okay? But in last week's week of charts, I remember saying, oh, I love this one because it just goes up. <laughs> so I did do an add-on position right here. And so far, you can see that didn't work. But you can see I would have taken this trade in and of itself because it was so strong on an RS basis, okay? So TRX, another one I'm still long. Stop is down here below the 30 EMA. Since it's consolidated, my stock can be fairly tight, okay? Or the EMA, so to speak, is caught up with price. So we get stopped out, we get stopped out, we get another place to put another one in. So here you can see, got in here, out here for half, and then our trailing stop is way up here. So far, so good. And hopefully, I know I just said hope, but hopefully next week we're talking about these same things again. This is this is the poster child for inefficiency. So is this SC, by the way, but ADA, I mean, I got in around 150, flipping it out around 180, okay? 30 cents, that's a pretty big move, right? What's that, 15% overnight? And then my stop is way up here. So this thing has doubled and now it's retracing a little bit. It gets stopped out, so what? Now, if, and it'd be a good problem to have, as I said earlier, if this account, or these accounts, I should say, begin to grow, then maybe I might be a little bit less flippant in all this, and it might not be as much fun, kind of like today's trading in stocks. <laughs> but anyway, got in here, you can see just a strong bar, and all I was doing is sorting by relative strength, like I just did. I just did a live trade, although you didn't see it, but I promise you I did. Got out half here, my stop is here, okay? And we'll see what happens. 
quantum way back here. Look at that, July 26, I think. Okay, flipped it out a few days later, trailed the stop higher. I get stopped out, I get stopped out, right? KSM, getting fairly close to the stop, got in, took profits, and it gets stopped out, it stopped out. And if I have to sit on my hands again for another four weeks or four months, like I did last time, then so be it. And again, Ocean got in here, out here, stop here. Look at that, getting pretty close to that stop, okay? If I survive this stop and this thing consolidates, then this EMA will catch up. I'll get my stop below that EMA. Ideally, I want my stop below the EMA. But in this case, I don't want to give up all of that, okay? Because at least back when I placed that stop, there were so many of them that were a lot hotter. CGLD, I just got in. Oh, I'm losing money, okay? Okay, oh, now I'm upset. I'm going to throw up, okay? No, just so what? You know, if it comes all the way back in, I'll put a stop in like right here comes in. So what? All right. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Now, this is when momentum begins to go bad, okay? I've gotten this one a few days ago. And again, had I gotten in earlier when it was first breaking out, I would have been taking profits around here. But my FOMO versus POMO had me buying it right here, stopped out, okay? I think I jinxed myself last week. I said I've never made a dime in sushi, and true to, <laughs> true to form, I never have. But I'll tell you what I'll do is I I think I might get back in this one now that it's pulled back to the 30 EMA and maybe I'll break that curse. I think a good entry would probably be around close to 13 on this one, just FYI. And again, anything you're learning here could be used in any other market, okay? Now this one here, let's see, got in here. Not sure what's going on on this one. I'll have to look it up, but I think I might have, I think I might have bailed out on this one, and the stop was actually way down here because it failed miserably. You can see this one here, in here, out here, stopped out. So what? Better than a poke in the eye. Okay. Mass. This thing just, this thing shot up within no time. I was cashing out and then stopped out. So what? Okay. I'd rather have money than be right about this thing or whatever. You know, it's like, okay, I was right for a day, good enough. Same thing here, shot up, got a profit, came back in. All right, I'm done, right? Got another slot. I can go out and buy something else. This one got in here, failed miserably. So what? I know. Well, I did drop an F-bomb in that one, but I can, I w can and will. See? But you can see last few days, the momentum has slowed and this momentum game might be over. And that's important to know when to back off a little bit. So maybe that CGLD, that might be one of my last momentum ones for a while until we see how it shapes out. But anyway, as you go through these, you can see those are my entries, partial profits and stops. And some of those, again, just got the, the first loaf out. Some of them just flat out didn't work. Okay, you see last few days have not been fantastic. So again, I might go back to sitting on my hands waiting for the next momentum market. And the other thing too is you'll notice on some of these, I played them fairly close to the vest. Is that, is that, is that the right term? Tight stop, so to speak. And that's because it, until I get my initial profit target out, I'm not going to give them a lot of room. In this case, I did get my initial profit target out, so that's a bad example. But in some of these other ones, I just kind of in and out real quick, you'll see that the stops were fairly tight because I wanted them to work right, right away. Now, once they turn into these longer term winners, like SC and ADA and a few of these other ones, I'm willing to give them a little bit of room to breathe. And then again, we've made it a whole month, or I've made it a whole month in some of these. So hopefully a month from now or two months from now, six months from now, we're still talking about these. All right. Any questions on crypto before we hop into the stock market? Hey, Dave, hope you're well. Interesting, difficult for da difficult or dangerous times to be too active in equities. Yeah, it's it's been a little choppy and it's like uh, I got chewed up for a while. Then I got a little bit more selective, at least on the intraday stuff, the super active stuff. And I started making money again. Maybe it kind of went to my head and maybe I'm thinking, ah, we can charge today. Let me, let me 
throw out some trades and see how I do. And I'll, I'll show them to unite the grand pool is going to show his trades. And of course it failed miserably. So yeah, it's a, it's a constant, you know, it's a constant ego check with all this stuff. All right, let's switch over to telechart. Also crypto. Okay, here we go. John Russ for me, trading crypto is simply about the funding. Well, they're getting a little bit better in funding them, but yeah, I had a, a client I was helping out and he got pissed off because he had to jump through all these hoops and all. And I hear what you're saying. Yeah, it's it, it could be um it could be frustrating. But once you get them open, you could actually, and this is kind of cool, you could actually send crypto back and forth between them, you know, which I haven't done a lot of lately because I'm trying to track everything. And uh, I actually, believe it or not, I actually pay taxes on my crypto and will continue to pay taxes on my crypto. I, I guess I use the word hopefully. It's like um, some people complain about taxes. I hope I, I hope I have to pay provided. <laughs> you know, it's like if you if you have to pay a lot of taxes, it means you're making a lot of money. All right, this thing is acting hokey on me let's see what's going on let's clean this up i don't want to pay more taxes for the sake of paying more taxes i want to pay taxes because i made so much money is what i'm trying to say yeah i know someone who's like stupid rich and they were bitching about the tax payments like that they have the right from their mansion every so often it's like oh, okay I don't know. i'm okay with that all right, let's take a look at the, let's go through this pretty quickly. S&P 500, a bit of a bummer today, stalling out. As you can see, not the end of the world, but I like a market to hit new highs and keep on hitting new highs. It looked like it was trying to break out a couple of days ago. We had a couple of little flat days in here, and I mostly sat on my hands doing these little narrow range bars, thank God. And then today I went in just thinking that this thing was going to implode, but it, it faked out a little bit, especially on the, ETF basis. So that's a bit of a bummer. And I'd like to see it just clear this prior peak in here decisively and not look back for a while. Same thing with the NASDAQ. It started to break out and the breakout looked a little bit more impressive here, but now it's already beginning to stall a little bit. I sure would like to see it just go straight up for a while and then have some orderly corrections along the way. Russell 2000 down 1%. Not the end of the world, but it's down below the 30 EMA, and these moving averages are still headed lower so far. But we'll see what happens there. Let's take the moving averages out. If you back the chart way out, Russell still looks pretty toppy in here. Now keep in mind a few big updates to make all the difference in the world, okay? But it does look kind of toppy. One thing I found interesting is the foods actually hit multi month lows today so i think that's kind of interesting not that you want to rush out and trade the food foods but it's kind of interesting that that's one area that's beginning to break down a little bit in here energies tried to break down they bounce but then they're just kind of chopping all over the place so i wouldn't rush out and trade them metals and mining kind of same thing kind of wide and loose and all over the place turning back down today okay well yeah we'll get to that learned for sure Drugs in general have been doing pretty good today, notwithstanding. You, you can see they're working their way higher. Biotech's been getting a little bit of a bid today, notwithstanding, but you can see it's kind of wide and loose and sideways. Health services, I guess with everything going on, has been doing pretty good. Did I just confuse the issue with facts? Although it is stalling a little bit at the prior peak. So the point I'm trying to make is, if you're following along like at the market in a minute, it's like, a, it, okay, it's mixed, it's mixed, it's mixed. It's still mixed, but improving, it's improving, improving, and now we're kind of back to that that mixed version. I used to work with a hedge fund many years ago doing technical analysis for him, consulting, and he would always say back in the soup when the market would come back in. So like the like the retail, for instance, right at these all-time highs, and now we're kind of back in the soup a little bit, a little sideways, not the end of the world just yet, nor can you see it from here. And you can see both time moving average is still an uptrend proper order. A little bit of Landry light above the 30 EMA. So it's okay for now. Take a look at like the semis, semiconductors. We're trying to make all time highs just yesterday. And now they're kind of stalling out a little bit. Longer term uptrend, little 
choppy in their pullbacks lately, if you want to call it that. Back to the downside, transports have generally been in a downtrend as of late, although they woke up recently and got above their moving averages. Now they're back below them. And finally, take a look at software. Software, all-time high, it's just kind of pulling back a little bit. So the point is, we're sort of mixed in here. I think it's a fluid situation. If the, oh my God, CGLD is going down. I don't care. <laughs> I might sell it by the end of the webinar. Who cares, right? I care a little. But anyway, you can see that it's kind of mixed out there. We're back to the mixed column. But overall, improving a little bit as of late. But today kind of throws a little bit of a wrench in the gears. I wouldn't, I wouldn't chase your tail and get too bearish just yet. But let things unfold. And, you know, it only matters when it matters. And, and, and rarely do I watch news. And I try to avoid news at all costs. But obviously, with the situation going on in Nigeria, no, not Nigeria, a little north of Nigeria, it's kind of like it, it kind of creeps a little bit into your mindset. It's kind of like, well, how could the market be going up with all that's going on? It's like, well, it doesn't matter until it matters. Just like the market at the beginning of the pandemic was still going up because nobody really was that worried about it as far as stocks were concerned. And then the market began to take it very seriously and then it, be, it became a problem. So as long as it's not a problem in the market, then it is what it is. Crypto brokers still make me nervous. They just don't make much sense to me as good as my good old TD Ameritrade cap. Yeah, and like somebody was asking me today about FDIC with brokerage, and I'm like, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I think there's something called SPIC, and that might actually give you a little bit more protection. You know, but I guarantee you with the, with the, these uh, crypto brokerages, there's no protection, okay? And, you know, when I did the article probably a year or so ago on Bitcoin, one thing that was kind of amazing to me is when you go to trade, they can actually see into your account. They can actually see the crypto in your account, which is kind of scary, right? So don't bet the form on this stuff okay i mean it's at some point in time i'm probably gonna have to get into a cold wall and all those stuff but right now i'm just having a lot of fun trading it but yeah you're right you know there's probably some dangers there and and a couple years ago or last year i forget exactly when probably two years ago i was turning some of that crypto profits into hard assets and that was kind of a fun thing to do too Okay, buy it B for Zen V. I think I'm long that stock. I am long this stock. Yeah, this was a buy it B a while back, quite a ways ago. I bought this, I think, way back here, if memory serves. And I think we talked about it on Facebook when I did. So you could, by the way, you could do a search. So search on Zen V if somebody feels inclined to see. But yeah, that was a buy it B. And this is one that I'm holding on. To, uh, I've taken half profits and I'm holding on. Didn't do too good today, but longer term, it's doing pretty good. So yeah, good point. Good, a very good book, very good read. Yeah, the Kaizen way, absolutely. Yeah, and this I probably need to reread it myself because, it, and I've seen people I know very very well go through this fairly recently, and I know some other people that are doing it. There's this stupid fad diet out there. I'm not going to say the name of it, and I'm not, I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but the whole thing is stupid. It's just stupid, and they don't want you to exercise because exercise is going to make you hungry, right? And most people don't want to exercise anyway. Oh, this is great. This is a diet on exercise. And uh, it's such a drastic change that none of this stuff will, will ever stick. And i got some friends that go through this cycle over and over again. But, you know, if you read Kaizen Way, what you do is you take two, you know, take one French fry out of your thing of French fries and then you need to rest them. And then next time you take two French fries out and you're not going to miss those two French fries or three French fries or whatever. And over a period of a month or two, before you know it, you've eliminated fries. And, you know, if you make these little small gradual changes and, and you know, Dave, why are you still fat? Well, because I haven't made those gradual changes. And, you know, my throat's getting a little sore from uh, talking for an hour or two here. and I usually don't drink beer during the week, but I might go home and have a beer, you know? So, but yeah, I hear you. You know, Maybe drink one sip less beer each time. LIFT is a short. Somebody in the group, you said, Sean mentioned it. 
LIFT. Um, it looks okay. Let's back the chart out a little bit. Let's see where we are. Yeah, it's still at relatively high levels. I like a short to come off of all-time highs. So I'm going to give that one an okay. Um, shorting is tough. I, I've never made a lot, a lot of money on a short side, except occasionally in a short burst. And obviously in 2007, 2008, I did okay on the short side. But it's it's tough. And so, yeah, it looks like it could be in trouble. I'd prefer if it was gotten past these prior little peak in here. I guess you could call that inverted cup of the handle. I think it's okay. I, I wouldn't personally short it at this juncture. I'd actually like to find, let's say the market does begin to crack and there was a semiconductor I saw um lrcx maybe see i think i'd rather and this is not a perfect setup and i didn't show this in the week of charts one of these stocks it might not have been this one but it was a semiconductor coming off of all-time highs i'd much rather get into something like this and then see it implode as opposed to something that's kind of already kind of rolled over a little bit okay it's the tlt what about tlt tlt yeah, TLT has kind of worked its way higher, but it's gotten a little choppy in here as of late. You know, this is one of those believe in what you see and not in what you believe, okay? It's going higher in spite of inflation going cray-cray, all right? There's no inflation. <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, PFE is pretty impressive for a an efficient stock. This is a very efficient stock, but every now and then an efficient stock can make an inefficient move. I do like it. Usually I don't trade stocks with a with a lower HV like this. What's interesting though nowadays is some of these stocks, and, and this is why you have to kind of constantly pay attention and constantly adjust. But some of these stocks or big cat stocks that, that are catching on, and I think it's the, the number, the huge influx of traders that we've seen over the last year or so with the pandemic and everything. And I think that's why some of these stocks can really, really, really move. And, and you know, maybe I've kind of got to adjust myself a little bit to be willing to trade some of these thicker stocks, which I will if the volatility is there usually. Um, I'd like a little bit more pullback, though. You know, we're only looking at about three bucks in here. But it is it does have an HV of only 26. But I like it. And I've been watching it. It's on my momentum list. I just want a little bit deeper pullback, okay? But yeah, it looks okay as it is. Again, I'd like a little bit deeper pullback on that. Yeah, and that's why I have it shown on Landry list. A little bit lower in volatility. And also, maybe I'm looking for perfection, but I'd like to see a little bit more deeper pullback. Now, here's the thing. If you come in tomorrow, write this down, and let's say it gaps down to 44, all right, on you know some, I don't know what, but let's not speculate on what. But this would be a perfect stock for an opening gap reversal. You come in, this thing starts pulling back, okay? Everybody's thinking, oh, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it. It's, it's getting lower. And all of a sudden, bam, it gets whacked. It shakes out a bunch of people. And then those who wanted to buy it, institutions or whatever, trying to window dress, they're going to pile into this thing. So let's say we gap down to 44 or whatever, let it meander a little bit, buy it at 45, and then start flipping it out around 48 or so, okay? That's all you got to do. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll have to see, though. That would be cool, though, huh? <laughs> I bet I'd get some people to come to the show live, right? Tomorrow, they're going to be watching it tomorrow night, you know, when I finally get this thing posted on, on YouTube. <laughs> and they're going to be watching going, like, oh, man, I'm going to start going to the shows live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying, John. Yeah, John John R. was saying that, that Zen V is an example of a buy B is still working. Okay. I think I just got a fill on something. I just heard my phone go off. So yeah, we got in, or I got in at least back here. And I think you played along too. John's been our resident. John R has been our resident IPO expert. Thank you, John. You've been putting on some good stuff. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who contributes to the group. And if you're lurking, that's fine too. But yeah, we've been in this one for a long time. It didn't do a whole lot at first, but then it finally took off. So yeah. Some brokers ship balances, TI, different accounts. I don't know what you're saying there. Um, 
You talk about the crypto. All right, any more? I'm nearly out of time. Anything else you want me to look at? I know since we started Facebook, oh, FIDC accounts. Okay. Yeah, some of them, some of them you can shift your money over to an FDIC account. Um, Google SPIC, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate to think a, a TD Ameritrade or a Schwab, and Schwab now owns TD Ameritrade is going to go out of business. I guess it could happen, you know. John says, thank you for all your teaching. Well, John, thank you. Thank you for contributing to the group. I appreciate it. Thank you for attending. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Everybody have a great night. I guess I'll see most of you guys and girls tomorrow on Facebook. Everybody else have a great weekend and hopefully see all you guys and girls again next week. Thank you so much. May the trend be with you.